The purpose of this video is to install this Hughes Autoformers Power Watchdog Plus EPO 30 Amp into this trailer. It looks like that. I hope to install it right here on this panel. That's kind of a dummy cover plate they have on there, which really serves absolutely no purpose. Looks more like it was a mistake. So I'm going to disconnect this 30 amp cord from inside here and run 10-3 cord that I got from Home Depot from that unit back through the cabinets and then back over to here. Right in here where I want to surface mount this power watchdog. If I'm unable to put it over there for some reason, if it doesn't fit, which it may not, uh, it's probably going to end up inside this cabinet somewhere. Uh, maybe up, up there in the corner or something, I don't know. Or maybe down on the bottom in the back corner, I don't know. I'm hoping it'll go right there where that dummy plate is. I also purchased this little guy which plugs into a 120 volt outlet. I haven't put this thing in yet but I did just plug the trailer in and it measures the voltage. So I have 122 volts coming in and now I'm going to go shut the AC power off because of the work I'm going to be doing which by the way if you're not comfortable doing this kind of work don't do it. Uh, they don't give you a whole lot of instructions, but I don't know why you need a whole lot. Um, well, I guess this is all you really do need. Put the brackets on, uh, attach the thing somewhere, and then hook up your wiring carefully. Kind of a little manual thing on how to use it, and this thing is Bluetooth. I'm going to put these brackets on and then see if I can fit it inside here. And I'm a little worried that it won't fit because it's too fat, too deep. I put these nicely made and nicely finished aluminum brackets on here. They give you some stainless steel flathead screws. Also have these uh, screws to mount this thing to wherever I'm going to mount it, although I like to make things real difficult so I won't be using those. I just took this plate off and that was definitely a mistake at the factory it looks like. It's going to be hard to see in here but here's here's the unit. Uh, if I take this block off piece of wood they put in there to cover up their mistakes this sucker will fit in there it's very tight I uh, have to figure out how to mount it uh, I also need to see make sure that it's not too fat for the front opening that I have available I will be able to do this, but it's going to be very tricky. It's going to go this way, facing out this way, but I have to cut this all out. I decided I'm going to use a piece of sheet metal to mount this thing. It's going to be a pain in the ass. I'm going to have to cut, shorten this on one side, probably leave the rest of the material there. I've made a cardboard template. That I'm going to cut this piece of sheet metal. I marked center lines, put a big cross on the cardboard. I'm going to have to transfer all this to the sheet metal, but this is my uh, test run here. I'm going to mark this off, cut the cardboard out, and do a test fit. I'm hoping to end up with something like this, but on the sheet metal. I removed the mounting brackets off of the rear and slid the template over the unit, put the brackets back on so I could mark where the holes or slots are going to need to be to mount this thing. I'm going to see if I can cut this on my bandsaw. I need to cut an inch and a half from here to here to make this thing 11 and a half inches wide total. I had to come out to the machine shop. I hope this works. Oh, that's way off. Why? Reset. I needed to cut off an inch and a quarter, not an inch and a half. That's better. Okay, please work. That 
works beautiful. I never, never cut steel sheet metal like that on this bandsaw. Nice. This panel is going to go right here. Now I got to make the cutout in the center. Drill a couple more holes over there so we can screw this thing in. Making progress. Next, I very carefully measured the centers of all four of these slots. I need to trace this guy out carefully onto the sheet metal. It's kind of hard because of these bumps. It'll be easier if I turn it over, but I need some reference marks. Turning over. And I need some super long screws. This is actually going to bolt to this panel from just like you see it with some long bolts. I'll capture this with a, a bolt, a nut, a nut, and then another nut on the other side. I need to drill out a hole here, a hole here, three holes here on the side, and these ones are just two so I can get my jigsaw in there. To see if I could do this without shattering this sheet metal too much and cutting into my nice workbench. Too sharp a turn, maybe? Trying to preserve the uh, flat black paint on the other side of this thing. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. I don't want to repaint it. Alright, I'm going to shut this off. I think I got it. Got a rough cut. Uh, I guess I should check and see if the cutout is big enough. It would be really bad if the cutout wasn't big enough. Looks pretty good. If it fits over this guy. It's going to take just a little filing on the corners. I have expected that. Probably should have just made it a little bigger. The plan is for the face of this unit to be nearly flush, maybe protruding a little bit off of the face of this panel, but I'm going to get some long bolts, 5 inch bolts, bring them up through this way, secure it here, put another nut here, and another nut here, and I can adjust this. Uh, that'll adjust the face out or in as desired. To go to the store and get some bolts. I just went to the new Ace Hardware store we have downtown and they had everything I need. Here's what's going on. I think this is looking pretty good. We'll give it a test fit on the rig. I need to cut a hole in this panel about from here to here. I'm going to see if I can do it with my sheetrock saw. Looks like I won't cut any wires or heating duct. Try not to ding this up. Alright, you get the idea? I have to cut here, here, and across here. Let's cut out. Flaming mess, but I brought the shop back out. Do a trim job. Oh, I see. The bolts are hitting the side over here. That sucks. Ah, or I can just make some notches. It's becoming very permanent. <laughs> well, it has to be at this point. Yeah, getting in a little deeper here. I'm going to notch these out a little bit. The long bolts can clear these areas. Something like that. Alright, next test fit. That's better. That's what I was after. Nice. Got a little bit of room to play here. Up and down. Good job, Ken. Remember wristwatches? Looks like it's about time to go for a motorcycle ride. I'll be back. Marked this 
six mounting holes for the sheet metal panel. I'm going to drill, uh, drill some pilot holes right now because I want to install on the back side T-nuts like this so that this will be easy to remove in the future. I won't have to take that, uh, that panel off over there. Uh, this will just come out the front side. I'll leave enough service loop on the electrical cords so that I can remove the bolts from the front side and pull this thing out should I ever need to service it. But I don't know if I'm going to get T-nuts on these guys. This side's going to have to be wood screws. Yeah, I won't be able to get T-nuts on the back side of that, but I will be able to get them in all of these. Have to drill the three holes on the left side with this size drill bit so I can install the T-nuts on the back side. I'll double check. How do you install the T-nut? See this bolt? It's a little bit too long. This T-nut, watch. Put that through the hole, thread the T-nut on there. Take the drill in forward or clockwise. This is gonna just draw that these teeth into the particle board over here. Here we go. So the best thing to do is get a staple gun and staple this so it'll never fall out, but I'm not going to do that. Now I have a method of driving this bolt through and attaching my panel on there. Next, I need to drill these three holes out so that my quarter inch bolts will go through. Again these three over here are going to just get wood screws into the particle board. I think I'm going to cut both the top and the bottom off because they have these extra holes here that I'm not going to use and I just can't stand it. That one on the bottom you can't see uh, right there is going to show and I just can't have that so I'm going to cut this off it'll look a little bit more like it was meant to be there. I just cut 5 eighths of an inch off of the top off of the bottom and I opened these three mounting holes up to 5 sixteenths for the quarter inch mounting bolts. This shore power cable that was going into this unit is going to go to the input side of the watchdog over there. So I need to disconnect the cable and move it from back here, back behind all this business. I can see it uh, back there in the corner. I don't know if it's going to show up. I'm going to pull it through to here. The black wire is going to the breaker. The white wire is going to this neutral bus. The green wire is going to this ground bus. Before we start any of this work, the shore power is disconnected. The battery power to the trailer is now off. Now we can commence the electrical work. I know the battery power is off because it's boiling hot in this trailer and I had this fan on and now it's off. This which needs an upgrade. There's nothing there, no battery power. I'm not going to be able to videotape all this, but the sequence of events is this clamp needs to be undone. Again, I think I already mentioned the black, white, and green wires need to be undone from in here. And then I will hook this one up. Here are the three wires disconnected. White, green, black. The green was paired up with this green. I just pulled this guy out after loosening the clamp. I'm going to make this cable look exactly like this one and clamp it back in there and hook the wires back up. And inside here is a clamp I need to undo. I'm hoping there's not too many more of these clamps because they're going to be a mother to get to. 
I can use this wire to fish my new wire all the way through here. I very slowly and very carefully used a box knife to cut through this outer insulation, bent this over, cut through there very slowly, very carefully, so as not to nick the insulation on the three conductors inside that jacket. That clamp is secure on the new cable. I'm very carefully stripping these 10 gauge wires. And to be very careful, cut any of the copper conductors in there. All these AC wires are now secured. The white, the black goes into the breaker. The green went into the green bus with its other green wire. Uh, I did check every one of these things. I found one of the black, I think it was this one, was loose. So tightened it up while I'm in here. Now I've put tie wraps on the cables. I'm going to attempt to use this cable to pull the new cable through over to my new spot over here. The goal is to pull the new cable. There it is, right there, going up. There it is. It is secured with a, with a screw down tie wrap right over here. I'm going to try to leave that thing. Here it goes. Uh oh. Oh shit. Feels like it's uh, screwed down somewhere else. Darn it. Okay, I gotta pull all the drawers out. They have a darn clamp on the back side of that thing. Screwed in from the back side right there. Darn it. Okay, I got that son of a bitch. I tried vice gripping the end of it and unscrewing and it worked a little bit. But then I just ended up drilling all around there. Now it'll pull through. Oh, I see. They have other wires tied up to it. Let's get rid of that. More garbage. Uh oh. They have another tie wrap on those wires. It would be so much better with two people. But such is life in the fast lane. Alright, I finally got all this stuff pulled through. It was a bit challenging because of that clamp back there, which is no more. I did uh, secure that guy back down here. I left a big service loop. Put the clamp on there and then tie wrap the cable to the clamp so it's not going to get pulled. Now I just have to pull this guy up. Careful not to damage that he heater duct. It's sitting back there pretty good. Amazing how they did this wiring. This will shove it and tie wrap it back a little bit. Make sure I get all my tools out of here. I don't really understand what you're going to do. I trust you. Are you sure? Here's the two cables. I put a clamp there. Uh, I secured that cable. That one under the clamp is the shore power. I want to make sure that's not going to get pulled out. It's also clamped back up in there. Screw down tie wrap. These two 10-3 cables coming through two, I think they were 15-16 inch holes I drilled. Coming here, this is the shore power which will go to the top of the watchdog. This one is going to the trailer side. I'm going to start final assembly on this. Uh, we're going to start with these quarter 20 by 5 inch bolts and some small pattern flat washers under the heads. I'm not real happy with the finish. Uh, it's got some crappy flat black. I put some wax on it to try to even the finish out. Uh, it's okay. I'm going to see how it looks when it's mounted in the camper. Someday maybe it'll come back out and get powder coated. Quarter 20 lock nuts.
All right, I'll repeat that three times. Next, put another lock nut on. Correct away to get some threads on the nylon. And take it off. Screw it on this way. Hoping to not cross thread it. These are going to give me the height adjustment to get the face of the watchdog flush or however I want it to look on the face of this thing. Typically this would go up, uh, I suppose, flat against a wall and it would be secured this way so these would never have a chance to come out. Not the way I'm doing it. That thing's not coming out yet so I have to bring these height adjusting nuts down a little bit. About a half inch more. So one and one sixteenth. About there. And I'll repeat that three more times. I think that thing's sticking out a little bit too much. I don't think it needs to stick out that much. It's about fifteen sixteenths. I think I'm going to leave it there. The beauty of this is I can fine tune this as desired by adjusting these nuts. Four more lock nuts on here. And there we go. One power watchdog mounted on a sheet metal panel. You need to wire it up and screw it on. Green neutral load. It's going to be green, white, black. I don't know if I should turn this thing on before I get it all mounted up. Nope. Let's go for it. Now we have some extra long bolts here. The flat washer, black plastic washer under the flat washer. This is going to go in. I will strain relief these. Oh shoot, I didn't open these holes up. Darn it. Out we come. Let's try that again. Open these three mounting holes up. Also took an obstruction out here. Hopefully I'll never have to take this sucker out for service. Oh, nice. Okay, I got excited and I had to put this in upside down. Now I flip it over. Three black wood screws to put in here and strain relief the cables back here. I think I'm going to turn it on before I go any further. It looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to go plug this thing in. I think that thing is going to go through some sort of self test and then turn bright white. Unless there's something wrong, it'll turn red. I'm going to go plug it in. I shut all the breakers off, I shut the 12 volt power off. I don't think I needed to do all that, but here we go. I'll be right back. I don't know what's supposed to happen next. Since it's bright white right now, that's a good sign. I'm going to turn the breakers on. One. Everything is on. This guy says we have 120 volts coming in. So everything's working the way it should. This will only light up if there's some sort of error. Uh, they have the codes here, E1 through E9. Uh, when it's all white like it is right now, everything's good. I suppose that'll make for a nice uh, night light too if we're plugged in somewhere. Uh, if the voltage drops below 104 or goes over 132, the watchdog will shut off the RV. That's a good thing. When there's problem, the dog's face will turn red. 
All right, I think we're good to go. I'm going to finish up a few little things here. All right, before I put this panel on, I strain reliefed that cable that's going to the top and this one on the bottom. I think those will stay put and the wires won't wiggle around. This is done. It's hard to see. We have to do this in the daytime tomorrow. I'm done with this installation. I'm really happy uh, with it for the most part. Uh, these uh, shiny cheap quarter 20 bolt heads don't thrill me. The finish on the panel that I used, which was a leftover thing from decades ago that I brought home, so it was free, uh, has some strange flat black paint on it that, uh, I don't know, it's just not great. If I gather a bunch of parts, motorcycle parts for powder coat, I'll take this panel off. It's not that difficult and get it powder coated. That would look much better. But it pretty much looks like it was meant to be there. Be nice, I guess, if that sheet metal part went all the way to the bottom. But I'm done with it. So it's that. I also purchased this ground neutral plug so that when I plug the camper into the generator, this will fix a neutral problem, floating neutral problem I guess generators have. And I got this little device here that will just plug into any outlet and display the AC voltage coming in. I guess I also need to download the app because this thing has Bluetooth. Uh, I'm not overly concerned about that because I'm not going to stare at my phone and watch what's going on. This thing is going to shut power off if there's a problem and that was my biggest concern. I didn't want to fry refrigerators and microwaves and whatever else happens when you get a low voltage or high voltage situation when you're plugged in at an RV park or RV campground. There's other YouTube videos online that will show you and tell you all about the app on your phone. I won't be doing that.